Hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. And today I want to talk about this clock here. It's a simple three-hand analog clock. It uh, looks like any quartz clock you could buy at Walmart for $15 or $20, you know, even in a large size like this. But there is something special about this one here. This is an atomic time receiver clock. So it will set itself to the correct time right down to the second and remain accurate to within about a second uh, all the time. But this one, unlike the ones I've shown you in the past on this channel, this one does not use WWVB to set itself doesn't use any of those kind of multi-band six uh, transmitters in the different parts of the world. This one uses Wi-Fi. So if you live in an area of the world where, um, you know, those, those government run time transmitters just don't work, or there's not one close enough to where you live, like anywhere in the Southern hemisphere, really, and, uh, and a lot of other parts of the world, if you don't get that kind of reception, uh, you know, for, for a regular radio controlled clock, this one uses Wi-Fi, so anywhere that you have a good Wi-Fi setup, anywhere in the world, in theory, this one can set itself to the right time and stay correct. So uh, I've already set this to my own Wi-Fi network at my house, so in theory, all I have to do is put in the batteries and just wait a minute or two for the hands, for the hands to you know, race around to the right time. There's an LCD here on the back, and it says it's connecting. And it doesn't really take that long for this to connect to the Wi-Fi here. And then uh, some other things will display on this readout here while it's getting going. And at the same time that it's getting going, the hands are going to race around to the exact uh, straight up 12 o'clock position. And once they've reached the straight up 12 o'clock position, then they may pause for a moment, but then they'll race around and set themselves to the right time. And that'll be that. And this thing will stay on the right time. Now, why would you want Wi-Fi instead of, you know, WWVB if you live in an area where the WWVB uh, setting should work? Uh, well, there are things that might interfere with radio reception uh, where they might not interfere with Wi-Fi. So if you're in a factory, a lot of, you know, heavy machinery <laughs> running, lots of big motors, lots of things that would interfere with radio reception. Maybe there are um, motion detectors to turn the lights on and off depending on whether there are people moving in the room. Uh, just the materials that the building is built out of. It's a, if it's a big metal building with a big metal roof, that might make uh, radio reception difficult. But even in those situations, Wi-Fi usually works pretty well. So just hook up, hook, you know, if you've got a Wi-Fi network in that building, Hook this up to that Wi-Fi wirelessly, of course, and then just wait a little while and all of a sudden it'll be set to the right time, right down to the second and it will remain correct within about a second uh, indefinitely until, until the batteries give out. Okay, so it's not, now it's going to pause here for a moment and then it should just start moving again real soon. Oh, there it goes. So right now, the second hand has started to move, and I can double check that against my, uh, my clock here, my, my watch, and see that it's just, it's right on. It's exactly right to the second right there, but it's going to have to race around to, well, uh, it looks like on my watch, I can see it's 11.52. So it's going to take a little while for this to race around to the correct time on the hour hand and the minute hand, but the second hand is already correct. And that's how it works, my friends. In some ways, once this sets itself, it's pretty boring after that. You know, you, you just won't notice that it's doing anything special. But that's good. You know, that means that it's just set to the right time. It's reliable. And this will, um, you know, it, it kind of disconnect from Wi-Fi to, to save battery power. But every, every morning, early morning, between 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock in the morning, this will uh, reconnect and just double check itself. So that happens every day. So I'm going to cut out a little bit on this video and just kind of skip to the, to the part where it sets itself to the right time and show you how that happens. All right, we're getting there, almost there. Soon it's going to uh, get to the right time and the second hand will continue to do what it's doing and, uh, you know, this will just kind of stop at the right location, which right now we should be uh, 11.56 and a half or so. Let's just watch that happen and boom, there we go. And it's just, it's just going to run this way. 
And the only time it's going to do anything special now is maybe when we switch, make a switch for daylight saving time. And I'm not sure exactly when that happens. Uh, you know, does it happen at exactly 2 a.m. like it's supposed to? Or is it some other time? I don't know. I, I guess I'll try to monitor that. We have that change coming up in just a few weeks. So if, it, if this does something extra special to change back to standard time, I'll let you know. If it's just really nothing special, it just you know zips around to, the, to make the time change. I might not make a video and tell you about that if it's not anything spectacular. But this is what it'll do. I don't know. It doesn't tell me on the box or anywhere in the instructions how long it's supposed to last before you'll need to change the batteries. So I'll kind of try to monitor that starting from, what, September of 2022. I'll see how, how long this goes until it looks like it needs uh, battery replacement. But what it tells me in the instructions is that it will remember my Wi-Fi network and password when I change the batteries. And, that, and you saw that's what it did here. I didn't have to enter that information again. It was able to uh, connect to my Wi-Fi here at my house just by putting the batteries back in. So it should be pretty easy. And, and the only thing you'd have to worry about is if you really do change uh, Wi-Fi networks or you change your Wi-Fi password or things like that on your Wi-Fi network, then you might have to go in and reset something. Otherwise, just you know, keep putting in fresh batteries every now and then, and, uh, and here you go. So it, this should work great in any kind of business environment. Usually it's the business environments where there are a lot of things that interfere with radio reception. Uh, for the other ways to synchronize your radio controlled clocks. But yeah, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi is pretty good here. All right, so so that's what it does. And uh, let me just show you the back once again. So you've got this LCD back here. And most of the time that goes uh, blank. But if I were to kind of hold down one of these buttons back here to activate that LCD again, now you can see that that LCD is showing me the current time and date and day of the week. And that stays on for just a couple of minutes uh, if you don't press any buttons, normally you hang the cl clock up on the wall <laughs> and this is, you're not going to see that anyway. So it goes blank most of the time, but it, it is a good way to kind of double check and make sure everything is running correctly. If you uh, hold down one of the buttons back here just for a couple seconds to activate that LCD. The LCD also shows you a few things while you're setting it up just to uh, give you an update on its status. But uh, yeah, most of the time that's just to help you set it up and then it's not going to do anything at all back there. Now let's just pretend for a moment that I need to change my Wi-Fi settings because I've, you know, I've moved the clock to a different location with a different Wi-Fi network or I've changed the Wi-Fi network in my own house. So I would, um, if, if this display is not active, I would press and hold one of these four buttons for just a few seconds until that display becomes active. Then I press and hold the Wi-Fi button for about three seconds. And when I do that, then it gives me, it's searching for Wi-Fi networks right now. And it's going to uh, give me the list of available Wi-Fi networks in just a moment. Okay. And there they are. And I can use the uh, plus or minus buttons to kind of scroll through my options here to choose the different Wi-Fi networks I'm using. I've got my own and I also have, you know, <laughs> the neighbor's in here as well. So then I press the, the button marked set to select. And then I'm able, this takes me to the password input screen. So here I've got all my characters. And if I push the minus button, it takes me to a different line. And I can just keep scrolling until I go back to the beginning. And if I press the plus button, then it takes me to different spots on this one line here. So I'm going to go through and uh, as I, let's just pretend, <laughs> let's, I'm, I'm going to put in a fake password because I don't want to show you my, my password. So let's just do W and then I'll scroll again there. X, Y, Z. And let's just say the rest of my password is ABCD. Okay, so then th let's pretend that was my password. Now I would press and hold the set button so that it would accept that password. And now it's trying to join this network using the password I just gave it. So I've given it the correct password now for this network. Now it's going to say, okay, I'm there, I'm connected, and I'm getting the city information that I need. I'm getting the time information that I need. 
And there you go. Now it knows the right time. And uh, I should, as I turn this over to look at the analog front of it, I should get exactly synchronized here on the front. And so there, I've done it. And you can do that. And like I said, once you've done it once, you can kind of set and forget. And the only mystery now I have is what happens when it uh, makes that change for daylight saving time. All right, I'm going to do a little experiment right now. I'm going to set my phone's time zone to Phoenix. And then I'm going to set my phone up as a Wi-Fi hotspot. And I'm going to set this clock to connect to my phone's Wi-Fi. And I'm going to see what it does as far as setting itself to the right time coming off of my phone as the Wi-Fi hotspot. Let's see what happens. So it's pausing now to think about uh, the alignment and now it's gone around. Okay, now the second hand is running and it's correct. It's right on with the right time. But now it's the big, the big mystery here is, is this thing going to reset itself to my correct time zone or the wrong time zone that it might be getting from my phone? Okay, moment of truth. Will this clock, based on the wrong time it got from my phone, the wrong time zone, will it set itself to about 11.30 right now, or will it somehow figure out the correct uh, time for my location, disregarding whatever the phone's internal time was set to? Let's just see. And indeed, the phone's internal time is set to the Phoenix uh, Phoenix area, which doesn't have daylight saving time, so this would be the correct time in Phoenix. And using the phone's Wi-Fi hotspot <laughs> as, as the Wi-Fi network that I connected to, this has set itself to the exact correct time for Phoenix, which is one hour behind what the exact correct time is for here. So that's an interesting thing you can do. I'm, I'm just experimenting, but really, uh, why would you bother with that? You know, go ahead and have your phone set to the right time if you're going to use that as your Wi-Fi hotspot for this. Or, you know, with any luck, there's, there's a more permanent Wi-Fi setup and you'll just connect to that and it will know the right time and set itself no matter where you are in the world as long as you have a correct internet connection and, and, and good Wi-Fi. Wow, what a clock. Okay, now there's one other thing I'm going to show you here that you can set this manually. I don't know why you would want to do that, but for some reason you have this clock and, and you don't have Wi-Fi and you want to set the whole thing manually, you can do that. And it will not connect to Wi-Fi. It's not going to connect to Wi-Fi later. It's just going to be a completely manual setting. And there is a way to do that. Let me just quickly show you. Okay, first of all, I'll take the batteries out and just kind of give it a good, clean reset. Okay, put those batteries back in. By the way, it came with these batteries. So, you know, batteries were included. Now I'm going to press and hold the reset button for just a few seconds. Okay. So I've put the batteries in, I've pressed the reset button. The last thing it was connected to was my Wi-Fi hotspot on my phone, which is no longer available because I turned that off. So now it's going to race around until the hands are pointed straight up at the 12 o'clock position. And when they do reach the straight up 12 o'clock position, I'm supposed to press and hold the set button in order to get into the settings where I can manually set the date and time. So let's just... Uh, it's going to take just another, just another, you know, 45 seconds or so to get up to the 12 o'clock position. I've decided it takes about 22, 23 seconds for this to go around one hour's worth. So two hours worth would be about 45 seconds to, uh, you know, to make these changes. And again, most of the time, this is one time you set it up and then that's it. And it doesn't make any other changes except for moving ahead for daylight saving time and moving, uh, moving, probably it's going to move ahead 11 hours for the equivalent of moving back to standard time at the end of daylight saving time. Anyway, okay, we're almost there. Now I can get into the manual setup mode if, okay, they're parked there. Now I'm going to press and hold the set button. And here you see on the display, it's going to allow me to, uh, you know, set some things there. So here I can set my uh, time zone. In this case, it looks like that's going to be UTC minus, minus 7 for my time zone. Okay. Then I'll push the set button. And then I'll push the, the plus button to take this to the current year. And I'm just going to, you know, go here and make sure I got the right settings for everything. 
And then as far as the time, you know, in, in military time or 24 hour time, I'll get that set as well. Let's see. And it's a little bit cumbersome because you're working with just, you know, plus and minus <laughs> buttons here. But I'm going to set this as close as I can. And okay. And then I'll say uh, daylight saving time is on. Oh, which means I have to go back and uh, oh, nuts. <laughs> okay, it's going to be one hour off now. <laughs> because of what I just did, because I wish this happens with some devices, you know, it has you set daylight saving time on or off after you've set the time on it. So this is going to be one hour fast now, thanks to that setting. Uh, but yeah, this is so manual, I have set it and, uh, you know, it's, it's not exactly right. And it's one hour off because of that daylight saving time thing that I did. But that's how you manually set it and, uh, and you don't access Wi Fi and it's just a quartz clock when you do it that way. And again, I don't know why you would do that, especially when you spent about $70 for this clock. That's the bad news about this clock. If anyone's concerned, it cost me about $71 for this clock. I got it on Amazon. There are places I saw it for sale even more than that, but that was the best deal I found. And then even on Amazon, it's about 50 cents higher than it was when I bought this just a little while ago. So, you know, you know how Amazon is sometimes prices change on a whim. So you might think, oh, that's a lot of money for a clock that's always right and reliable. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And of course, if you're talking about the industrial um, applications where people would have clocks like this in a school or a factory or any kind of those in, in industrial locations, a lot of times they'll have a master clock which may be hardwired to different clocks all around the facility. And when you're getting into that kind of equipment, you're going to be spending a lot more than $70 per clock when you get into that stuff. But that's not necessary anymore. As long as everyone is synchronized to the correct atomic time, which you can get from internet servers, it doesn't matter that this clock is connected to a master clock in their same facility, as long as the master clock itself is all, all also set to atomic time. So it's a wireless solution to, a, a, to you know, to, to make all your clocks synchronized in ways that maybe 20, 30 years ago, you would have had to set up you know, wires and master clocks and all that. So, you know, for, for the right situation, this will be the best way to go. I'm sure of it. And uh, for $70 in situations where you would spend a lot more than that, you know, for industrial clocks, this is actually a pretty good bargain for me. I don't really need this because my radio controlled clocks work just fine, but I did want to get it because it's something different. And of course I collect clocks and you know, this, this was a pretty good deal and it's, and it's nice and sturdy and solid and I'm going to play with it for a while. And if anything special happens, I'll let you know. But I think for now, is this going to be, this is my clock that's going to just run and just be right. <laughs> and I change the batteries every now and then, and that's it. And make sure that the, my Wi-Fi router, all, all that is, is set up correctly. And, and that's it. And I got correct time. And yeah, so anyway, I wanted to show this to you, especially those of you, I feel badly for people that are in places where you know, the regular radio controlled clocks and watches just don't seem to work because of radio interference or your distance from a good transmitter. This is a great solution for a nice, simple clock that's always going to be correct. They say within one second on the, uh, on the, on the box, but, and then in the instructions, it says within half a second. So I don't know, you know, it's, it's going to be close enough <laughs> within, I'll say within half a second of the exact correct time checking itself every day. And that's great. That's, that's what I like. So anyway, I wanted to show this to you, see what you think of it and look for one. If you want to buy one yourself, Bulova connect the Wi-Fi clock. That's always correct. You know, just for the fun of it, I went ahead and even though this is still running on the wrong time that I set manually, I've gone in and I've set it up once again to log into the Wi-Fi network. And I'm going to see if it will now correct itself without ever even having to take the battery out. We'll see what happens here in just a, just a minute or two. Okay. It says it's getting the time and there it goes. Okay. Now it's going to, now it's set to the correct seconds and it's going to take a little while to whip around 11 hours worth until it shows the correct time again. So, all right. I just want to make sure I got that set uh, before I continue. 
and I've got more videos to show you. I've, oh, I've got, I've got another Wi-Fi clock to show you. Yes, yes, I need to make that video too. And you can watch that pretty soon coming up here on the Good Timekeeping Show.